Hi everyone, we're here in a paddock that's being packed away, so knowing our look, there'll be plenty of noise and stuff going on behind us. We hope we can keep your attention here, talking about what's happened today here at the Marina Bay Circuit. Let's start with the actual on-track action, Ben. Dominance from Lando Norris today. Yeah, it was quite impressive, wasn't it? I mean, I was coming to this weekend expecting some sort of um, carnage on the first lap. This, this race is notorious for, for safety cars. Uh, we've had one every single year. Apart from this year, no safety car at all. So it was a great getaway from Lando and never looked back. Said about extending his lead. At one point, the gap was up to sort of 27, yeah. no, sorry, 24 seconds, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Building the gap. Um, and yeah, he absolutely cruised home. Came out of the car, looked fairly fresh, um, <laughs> considering the conditions. It was an absolutely stonking hot day here. Um, so much so the Mercedes drivers uh, didn't do their post-race media duties because they were so exhausted so um you know it tells you how tough it is but yeah no i was really impressed by lando i thought he did uh, faultless faultless performance today what did it tell you about the championship really because we see this is his third win of the season his third win altogether yeah he seems still a bit downcast over his chances because verstappen was second yeah i think that this was a massive result for red bull and indeed max verstappen you know he's still without a win but what he now knows is that the team, or what he's believing is the team, have turned a corner. Yeah. And you can see that they're starting making progress. There's a lot more positivity within the team, um, certainly on his side of the garage. So I think that it was a big shot in the arm for him. Um, we'll probably come on to, to Daniel Ricciardo in a minute. But of course, Lando was on for setting that fastest lap till the death when Daniel Ricciardo took it. So, um, you know, that, that, that keeps the gap interesting, um, you know, and still obviously in... Max's favour as the races start to tick down. I think that, you know, it's still looking like a, a Max Verstappen championship at this point. I think you're absolutely spot on. I think if you'd have said to Max, do you want to come here, finish second, Lando will win, he'd have snapped his hand off at that. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, that's probably the best that the team could hope for. That McLaren car is so quick. Uh, the fact they had it finished ahead of Oscar Piastri and the other McLaren, that's obviously a big bonus to them. Daniel Ricciardo, you mentioned there. What a, what a strange day for him. Yeah, really strange, wasn't it? I mean, Damage was kind of done yesterday in qualifying, poor performance. You know, it's always going to be a difficult ask to try and turn that deficit around. And yeah, it, it wasn't a great race, was it? He pitted three times. One of the sad things, though, was that he got out of the car, walked through the paddock, it was as, as they do, but he was dressed in a vest and he had his drinks bottle and it just felt as if this was like his final race. Yeah. It felt really quite odd. And then Max Verstappen was asked about him in his press conference, the separate press conference that, again, we also come on to. And he, he spoke nicely about Daniel, but it was almost like a goodbye speech. Yeah. Um, you know, all the noise coming into this race was that this was the race that Red Bull would make their decision going forward. I'm not, still not sure whether it means, you know, immediately whether Daniel will be gone and Liam Lawson's in for the next race, yeah. or indeed if that actually means with regards to 2025. I think that, you know, there's going to be quite a few tough conversations at Red Bull over the next couple of days. We'll obviously be clearer towards the second, you know, to the end of next week as to where they're going to be. Yeah, I was in the media pen when Daniel Ricciardo came in and he was quite emotional. Like A couple of times felt like he was maybe even holding back a few tears. He spoke about the lap itself, uh, the pit stop itself that, you know, yeah. helped, helped get the fastest lap. Said that you'd get a nice Christmas present, present off Max Verstappen, maybe a bonus from Red Bull. But that was kind of masking, I think, his emotion. You know, we know he's a smiley character. Yeah. I mean, he, he left before um, at McLaren. That was kind of on his own terms. He wanted a break. You know, there were options, but he decided he wanted a break from Formula One to reevaluate whether he wanted to continue in Formula One. Then he made up his mind he wanted to be back. So that was his own choice. The difficulty here is that this isn't his decision to make. It's Red Bull's. And unfortunately, I think he's probably fearing the worst and that maybe Liam Lawson will be in at Austin, which is obviously a race that he absolutely loves. You know, all the American fans absolutely love Daniel Ricciardo. So that's going to be really tough if that's the case. He said there's a realistic chance he won't be in the car in Austin. So maybe he's thinking worst case scenario. I think it's worth saying as well, he said, he spoke really philosophically. He said, look, I'd be leaving in a better peace of mind than I was with what happened with McLaren. It, it is a strange situation though, at this stage of the season to have such an experienced driver. Yeah. Let's be honest, driving for a team that isn't scoring points not, yeah. and not expected really to challenge further up the grid. Is this now just an opportunity, do you think, that for Red Bull as, as an organised, as a motorsport organisation thing, let's see what Liam Lawson could do for the rest of the season? I think so. Yeah, it's a good test, isn't it? Just to see how good he is in that car. They've got a, a good marker in Daniel. They know what he's doing, what he can deliver. They've obviously got Yuki uh, Sonoda in the other car, but this now allows them another driver to look at and to evaluate with regards to 2025. 
we've gone probably halfway through the video, Ben, without mentioning swearing, which has been the theme of the weekend, but we'll, we'll get onto that now. Max Verstappen again, obviously. We won't go over the ins and outs of it. Hopefully everyone already aware, given a reprimand, community service almost for swearing in a press conference. Yeah. He spoke about it, the drivers come out in support of him, but it moved on a little bit further today when you spoke to him outside, didn't it? He did the same thing as he did the day before where he was in the official FIA press conference and gave very short answers. And again, the team this time facilitated a separate press conference um, in their own hospitality unit where he was free to discuss and he spoke openly um, without restrictions. And, you know, he kind of, it felt strangely cathartic from his point of view. Um, it's obviously good from our point of view as journalists because we're able to, you know, understand exactly his frustrations but of course put the question to him uh, and said you know he has a precarious relationship with Formula One at the Dutch Grand Prix he'd already said he was reached the halfway point of his uh, Formula One career um, and does this indeed make him reconsider his position within the sport of which he gave a very revealing answer and said yes absolutely it does you know part of the enjoyment of Formula One is you know being able to freely express himself and he feels that he's not being able to do that um, through fear of being punished um, and yeah that's kind of weighing heavy on him at the moment and forcing him to reassess just how much he loves being in this sport. Yes I wonder how long this is going to go on for we, we've got a bit of a gap now until Austin if, if the car is back to the speed it's at he's going to be talking in qualifying press conferences he's going to be talking yeah. in top three podium press conferences it will be interesting to see if he goes into Austin and thinks let's put that to one side yeah or if he keeps giving this short shrift yeah. Well, how do you think? You, you spoke to him, how do you think it's my turn? Yeah, I, I think a lot depends now on what happens over the next couple of days. Um, I would imagine that Red Bull speak with him and they also speak with the FIA and they also speak with Formula One. The situation can't go on as it is. They can't keep doing the separate press conference. He can't be like that on TV. It all becomes a little bit laughable. It was great yesterday, it was great today, but I think from Austin, such a big, important race that I think they'll have a big discussion, sort everything out and it'll be a lot clearer by then. I think also the he has a lot of public backing, the fans all seem to support it, but yeah. they'll grow a bit tired of it all, I think, won't they? They want to hear from the drivers, they want to hear from these situations. Yeah. I mean, it's quite a niche niche thing to fight over, isn't it? Yeah. You know, kind of in the wider world of things, you know, that, that it's kind of a strange little thing. It plays into our hands as journalists, you know, a really interesting story and dynamic, yep. but in the wider picture, the wider world, it doesn't really mean so much. Unless, of course, he does quit. Yeah, which you never know, and you'll hear it at first, because those questions came from yeah. Ben Hunt of Autosport. I think it's worth, I just want to go back a bit to, to Daniel Ricciardo. Sure. He was voted F1 driver of the day today by the fans, 20% of the vote. I think you voted. Yeah, I was about to say, I think it's, we can reveal a lot of the press room actually, when the, the initial vote came up and he was on 11%, yeah. a few of us got on our laptops and, you know, bummed that up a little bit. He, he was really appreciative of that. He said, you know, be honest, most of the times we don't really even look at it, yeah. we don't really know, but for him, I think it was almost a, a fan appreciation of what he's given to the sport. Yeah, I mean, we talk about characters, don't we, of which Max is one, uh, Daniel's another. Great character for Formula One, as I mentioned before, hugely popular in the US. Um, yeah, shame to see him go in that sense. Um, I think probably it's about time that he does, um, but it is obviously sad to see him going. And just finally, there's been a bit of a split between the RB Red Bull, yeah. should they be allowed to do what they did today? I suppose it's a little bit team orders in a way, isn't it? But yeah, it's, where do you sit with that? It, it, it's difficult. It depends on how much influence Red Bull had over, you know, Daniel setting that fastest lap. I'm probably, you know, cautious and we'll start looking and finding out if indeed they did. Um, I think from Red Bull's perspective, there was no influence whatsoever. They didn't get on the radio and say, can you stick Daniel on those tyres so that he can do the fastest lap to take it away? They're just focused on bringing Max home and Checo home. It may have just been circumstance where RB were looking, knowing the decision that they're going to make about Daniel, saying, wouldn't it be nice if we gave him fastest lap as the sort of goodbye gift, as it were. So maybe that's the case. But obviously the teams will obviously be a bit, a bit suspicious as to what, how it all played out. Right, everyone's packing away here. There's more noise going on, so let us pack away. We'll all be back at Austin in a few weeks. Thank you for listening over the weekend, everyone.